you with Nate Athlon? Well, we just have to be smart with the positions that we put those other guys in. Um, try to do things to, to, to keep it simple that they can execute and um, have a, t a tremendous amount of confidence in what they can do. We just have to get to the drawing board and find out exactly what that is. Not to give away any kind of game plan, but you know, do you anticipate just running a lot more option, a lot more, uh, a lot less the pro style passing game? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think that has a lot to do with what we do today and tomorrow in practice and just, again, find out what they can do and what they can handle. And, you know, we need to be smart, make sure we put them in positions where they can be successful and we don't ask them to do too much. Same time, though, we can't go out and, and be too vanilla as well. I thought he did a good job of managing the game. That was really his first time being in the heat, being in, in the thick of the battle. Um, thought he managed it really well. Thought he managed himself really well. I mean, that Iowa was a, a cool atmosphere to play in. can be a lot of pressure. But um, I thought he did a good job. I thought he made some shots. Receivers dropped a couple balls or had chances to make plays that they didn't. But um, overall, pretty pleased with what he did. Is there anything that you can do in practice to, to simulate the, the speed of the, of the game at all to – to make it so that he can start to get used to it. Yeah, you know, we'll try to go some ones-on-ones -on -ones, maybe as much as we can go against our number one defense and, and even the number two defense. But other than that, it's pretty hard to simulate, especially a Michigan State defensive speed. That's going to be hard to simulate. And if you were describing Chris, and I asked Kevin this too, I mean, is he a poised kid, a calm kid, an excitable kid where you're going to have to calm him down initially when he goes out there because, you know, he didn't have time to think. That's right. Not there at Iowa. Now he's going to have all week to think about it. Yeah, no, I think he's a very poised young man. Um, he, there doesn't seem to be a lot that rattles him. Now, you know, when you when you get put in, in the middle of a, of a game at Iowa and there's 70,000 people yelling at you, that, that's different than on the practice field. So there's only so much you can simulate in practice that, that, that can, can happen in a game. <clears throat> but, I, you know, I think his demeanor's pretty good. I, I think he'll be just fine. What did he... Uh show during the preseason. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't, Indiana would not have him be, uh, you know, promoted all the way to number two quarterback if he didn't have some obvious skills. What, what, during the, what changed between the recruiting process when you, Indiana, it looked like Indiana was recruiting him as an athlete or for other positions, and then to determine that, well, you know, I, I think this kid is a quarterback. Really, probably the first time that we saw him throw. Um, he has the strongest arm on this team, really stronger than Nate Sudfeld's. As far as, you know, the, the, the throw that he made to Jay Sean Harris Saturday that got picked off was a laser. Um, and it got on Jay Sean pretty fast and he wasn't ready for it. But he has an extremely strong arm and um, can make any throw in the field. You know, he, he just needs some development, needs some, some grooming, um, some reps, some coaching. But uh, we think he has a chance to be very special. He uh, sounds like maybe touch is something that uh he has to work on it. A little bit. Yeah, right. You know, I think, you know, from where Chris is coming from, from high school, the level of football that he's at now is 10 times more difficult than anything he faced in high school. So, um, you know, for him, there's a lot to learn. He's been learning for a long time, and, and I think Saturday was a good uh, maybe first test, if you will, for him. And I'm excited to see where he can go. How much of a gap is there between Chris and, like, Diamond or Boudreau? Um... Probably not a lot of, of a gap, to be honest with you, because I think they're all young enough that they're all going to be a little bit wet behind the ears, that they all need some experience out there. Um, you know, Alexander can do some things better than Chris can, and then vice versa. Um, so I don't think there's a huge gap between them. How does he compare to Trey? Um, I think that he's bigger and thicker and stronger. I think he's going to be a little bit more durable. Um, I think he can still make the same runs that Trey can. Um, you know, I, again, I think his arm strength is a little bit better. Um, now what I have to do, again, is, is hone everything, in, everything else in on his technique and his accuracy and things of that nature. But, um, but I think he's got similar skills. Is this basically a week where you really earn your money? Because now you have, to, have to, you have to work on this quarterback that maybe you weren't planning on. Yeah, you know, Coach Wilson said it this morning. It's really going to be a lot of fun because now I get to go back and coach and, and teach kids just the base fundamentals of the game. And not that I wasn't fun to coach Nate Suffield, but Nate was on a different level. You know, you're, you're teaching him different things now. It's like you get to go back to square one, um, which for us as coaches is exciting. How is Nate handling this? I mean, injury is part of the game. Everybody knows that, but then it happens to you and then life gets more complicated. You know, I've only been around him just the last two days, obviously, since it happened just a couple of days ago. But um, he seems to be doing just fine. I think there's some frustration that, you know, you're going to lose, miss, miss the rest of the year. But um, 
he's a competitor. I know he'll battle back. I know he'll be just fine when we come around to next fall. But, um, you know, disappointed that he can't play. But I, he's going to be a great teammate. He's going to help these young quarterbacks and help our team win, however that is, however he can. A little bit about the offensive line and the blocking that they've done, especially Tevin's long runs. It's, it's, he's outrun people, but it's not like he's really had to battle through a bunch of guys. He's, he's had some pretty clear lanes. Very pleased with how those guys are playing up front. And really, it, to me, and, and I know Coach would say the same thing, it comes down to an 11 man operation. So not only is it the guy with the ball in his hands, but the receivers making blocks downfield, the tight ends at the point of attack. You know, a couple of those runs Saturday, um, our tight end made just phenomenal blocks at the point of attack. Receivers made some chops, and Tevin was able to squirt for a long one. But um, I think our O-line's playing at a high level. We needed that to continue, and um, this week will be another great challenge. I know you can't get into game specifics, but, but last week Purdue had a lot of success in running wide. They didn't want to challenge Michigan State, you know, directly attacking. How, how much of a, a help is that seeing what Purdue did as a way to beat them? Well, I, you know, Purdue had a, a very good game plan, and they did a lot of different things to get the ball outside on the perimeter, uh, then to hit it up inside. And, and I think there has to be a good mix between those two things. Um, Michigan State has been one of the best defenses in this entire country for the last couple of years. So, you know, you're not just going to line up and run downhill on them every single play. Um, so there has to be some good mix, some different ways of, of attacking them. Um, and again, I thought Purdue did a good job of that Saturday. All good. Thanks, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.